Hi there, and welcome to the Happy Infectious Faces, and this time it's going to be like a tutorial. We're going to discuss drawing from a reference and using some math and some references and ratios. In this case, it's from the Happy Infectious Faces, so if you like this kind of video and find it helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to all to receive a notification when I post more. It's free to do. When you're referencing or working from a reference, it's really helpful. And it's because of this, it helps us to learn, to really understand what is there, not what we think is there. We need to remove our expectations and go for some reality. When we were children, we started to learn by observing around us, which is really important. And we started with mostly our parents, support people, our family. We would see their eyes and we would see their face. And then we would see their mouth moving and say wonderful things and encouraging things to us. And in general, we see kind of like what I'm showing in this video, in this picture. They're holding us and we're looking up, so it kind of gives us a below view. <laughs> we have an image that looks something like this. And maybe a little later on, we'll do things that are important to us, like we'll add some arms and some legs and maybe a round body, but maybe not the details. When we start to learn how to draw, these ideas can stay with us when we start drawing, especially when we go back on some old stuff. And as we observe more, or have people help us to observe, or we read, or we watch videos, we can find out things a little differently. What artists over the ages found is that we were able to pull in ratios and math to help us make our faces look a little more real. And well, the whole world really, because we started bringing in math into all sorts of stuff, not only to make a look right, but also to make it seem more harmonious. But today, right now, we're just going to observe the face. And I'm going to mostly keep it your focus on the front face. In this video, um, it's going to help you hopefully to start the ball rolling. Our faces are really all about math, and I'm sorry, it's true. Oh. Math is in the face, in the body, in all of the human anatomy, really, and if you look around, all anatomy. And it looks, the face will look something like this. So let's go over it a little bit. If you're looking at the face straight on, it looks like an oval, and then halfway down the oval is where we'd pro is where the eyes would be. And halfway down from the eyes, to the bottom of the chin is where the end of the nose will be. And halfway between the nose and the bottom of the chin is the mouth. And halfway down the mouth to the chin is the bump of the chin. Now, interestingly, let's divide the face up lengthwise. And of course, we would have the center of the nose, the right in the center. But believe it or not, halfway on either side would be your hand width. But that's another video, and we'll talk about that maybe later. But we could divide the face width-wise into fifths. And the first and last fifth would be the side of the face. And the second and the third would be where the eyes would be. And the middle fifth would be where the nose would be. And this is just a basic breakdown to start the proportions to be correct. Now there are many theories about the exact proportions and there's some wonderful books and videos to help with the math of art and it's good to know and I use these proportions often and I've made references for myself when I needed them. After a while, like any studying, it starts to become second nature. The reason you might like to study this and be able to use it when you want to is from learning what is there you then can break rules, or you can keep them. It will be a choice. You'll be able to make a choice. You can always tell when people don't know the rules and just create, because often something just doesn't look quite right. <clears throat> okay, 
<laughs> only people looking for perfection, like the Greeks, for the perfect body and the perfect face really hang out strictly with these proportions. And it actually is a matter of opinion because what one person thinks is perfect is not necessarily what you might think is perfect. But as a rule, if they make it look like in these proportions, the face will actually look unrealistic. And that's because every face is unique. Every, and genetics play a huge role in these proportions. So you're a mix of many people. So your, your proportions are gonna be specific to you. And that's what makes it interesting. So in this face, straight on, it travels through time it, uh, well, sorry, as you move the head and the face, it travels through time and space a little bit differently. So, but the proportions somehow are still in effect. So look how the face changes as it moves through space and you can see that the ratios stay the same as you draw. They might mm, change up a little bit because of how you view it. And this is just, this video is just to give you a taste a quickie sketch so don't get all judgy wudgy on me this is just a light drawing and a light talking for the video today but what it helps me to do is keep the basic shape of the head as it moves through space and then I use shapes and ratios to draw what is there like these drawings you'll see that I pick out little shapes that I will make sure that help to keep the angle looking right and it helps to keep the shape maintain its form and it's those ratios those shapes that stay specific in that special moment like you see here in blue this video is only how I do it and it's not necessarily what a school of drawing might teach you I mostly what people would say as self-taught I did study anatomy in school so that helps also I have an expectation of what a body will look like. So take what I say with a grain of salt and create your own journey. But learn enough to make your art knowledgeable but still creative. You want to learn, you want your learning to support your, creati your creativity. For me what I have found is that I get more creative because I'm not spending so much time trying to figure out why my painting is not working and then getting frustrated with it and giving up and therefore having unfinished projects which is upsetting and then I start saying stuff like I can't draw or paint. It's understanding things like proportions, color and light that can be freeing. So get those under your belt with learning, practice and then explore and have fun. It's important in your creativity. Know the rules and then you can break them. Here's an amazing teacher that you might like. His name is Proko and he does YouTube videos and also has other classes and stuff. And he supports uh, artistic anatomy beautifully. He communicates it really, really well and makes it super simple. I suggest you check out his channel for super lessons and understanding. Seriously. Check him out now or in the next while anyway. So stay tuned for part two where I actually go into more of the drawing in a practical sense. So practice, 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 and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching, and if you like this kind of mm, content, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to all to be informed when I post more. Talk to you soon.